Ryan here, and I'm here with the Medieval Scottish Sword from uh, Medieval Shop. Uh, Medieval Shop Australia sent us this sword in the package that we received right after Hurricane Harvey, which we dubbed the Hurricane Harvey Relief Package. Uh, it kind of has a joke. Uh, and uh, it's beautiful. I love this sword. Uh, this version of a Scottish sword is not quite just an individual army sword like a lot of companies do. They'll put a big old uh, tea cozy pummel on the back uh, and make it uh, a much shorter hilt and have it where it is an arming sword specifically to be used one-handed. In this version here we have a much smaller pummel. It still has the five lobes that would be influenced by the Viking culture. Uh, knowing that the Vikings or the Scandinavian peoples did uh, intermarry and mix with a lot of the early Scottish clans. So what we look at here is a lot of people immediately think that that's an arming sword. But in the effigy in Edinburgh Castle, uh, which is around the 16th century, we see a Scottish mercenary or warrior with a sword on his actual arming belt. And you see the straps in the arming belt, and it seems like an extremely long blade, but there's no way to tell what hilt size they truly meant. Yes, his hands look really big in the, the effigy. Possibly male hands, uh, male permits, but the hilt could be this length, and it also looks like the pummel's way smaller, much like this one. So this sword here is very much like a Type 13. The blade has lots of blade heft and length. Uh, it would function a lot like a long sword. You could use long sword techniques with it. You use the, choose to use the hand and a half. The pummel doesn't get in the way. You could use it two-handed, or you could go ahead the way this was designed uh, with the ribbing and the shape of the actual uh, hilt. You could use it one-handed with the shield easily. So this sword would be very versatile. A lot of people let up, dub them as war swords, like a, a Scottish war sword or a uh, Scottish uh, bastard sword would be another another way of putting it. But it's not quite a full-size claymore. And there's a lot of arguments over the name claymore, but uh, what I'm trying to say is basically it's a really good Scottish design sword. It's very plausible. This could be what they were depicting in the effigies at Edinburgh Castle. So anyway, without further ado, I'm going to try some of those techniques, hand and a half and single-headed cuts on our analog ballistics gel head here. Uh, this is a very good head I've made. It's got a very nice, large coconut skull, uh, really heavy 20% ballistics gel, and we've got our jaw made of PVC pipe and our spine, and it is filled with our blood concoction. We have it here on our stand that was made by uh, Caddy. Uh, she's got a new design where this is very rigid, our post, but it still has some give. And this is held in place where we won't have the head spinning on us if something rips and pulls as it cuts. Uh, we won't have the head flying out on us like a Pez dispenser or something or a uh, rock and sock and roll robot. Yes, yeah, so we have, a, it's like a vice design. We have uh, thumb turns on the back. We have the uh, wing nuts uh, and it just bolts down. So now we have a much better uh, rig and uh, we're going to find out how devastating this blade truly can be uh, on an unarmored head. All right, I shall start off by doing a horizontal cut from right to left, be holding it back in uh, this position and stepping in and cutting straight across. So they would probably be done probably with any type sword that you can use hand and a half. Oh, I cut a bit high there. <laughs> we took part of the skull off and top of the head. We bit high there, guys. Let's try that again. Let's get it on here the right way. Ah. Oh! Well, indeed, it may not be a claymore, like the large sense of the later swords that are confused with maybe bearing swords or huge uh, swords like I've tested the claymore before, where I cut the top of the skull off and it is a huge two-handed sword that weighs 6.6 6 pounds, uh, but it has more than enough ability if used properly to totally decap the skull in the same fashion. So it being a smaller bastard sized version of it or a uh, Bastard sword size or war sword version, much like a long sword, an early long sword, if it was a predecessor to one, it performed extremely well. Much like, much like some Type 13s, but it has that heft to give it that extra ability. I am extremely impressed.
some people remember back with the Claymore, I did the same thing. I uh, did a little high on one of the first cuts, and they came back and took the entire skull apart. We have that same effect right here. Wow, that doesn't happen every day, but that is a beautiful opening of the skull, and we went through the PVC pipe on the inside, and you can see the blood still inside the uh, cranium. And I also saw the blood splatter everywhere. Yeah. As time on your tradition, we healed him. We put his head back together the best we could. Uh, and we're going to try an overhead cut because we like to get the most as we can out of these because they're a lot of trouble to make. And yeah, <laughs> might as well, right? Yeah. And what we did have left just got split and we cut down into the actual skull again. <laughs> I don't think you're going to be healing him this time, Hoot. No, I think we should just lay off that one. We cleft this completely too, of course. Pretty clean cut. Straight down the center. We have a cut straight through it. As seen here. Not a lot to see, but it did just completely straight through it. I not expecting that effect since it was already compromised. It would, it would probably cut much deeper if we had it. Okay, I might try something different, try thrusting straight in and we'll see what it does. Oof. There's no top to Nice my head. blood spray. And what we've done is we've come up, we've cut through the skull, splitting it right here. And blood has gone everywhere. We have a crack that's cut straight through here. Let's just hope this blood doesn't affect my garden too bad. Ha! <laughs> it shouldn't. Mostly sugar and uh, dye. But it went through in between. It actually went through the bone. Or, or simulated bone. Hey, if it was real blood, I wouldn't be as worried. We pretty much destroyed the guy. He was dead on the first blow. I mean, there's nothing else you could say about that. He died outright. That first cut, yes, this is the, my new nickname for it. It's going to be the Mini Claymore. Or Claymore. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started here. And I just talked to her too much. Scratch that thread. Fucking cut him. Cut yeah, his I'm, fucking head off. Yeah, I'm back with the mini Claymore or mini early period greatsword. Uh, I'm going to nickname it that now because it's behaving much like that. The only other sword we saw do anything like this, which was basically a long oh. sword, was the Boromir sword, which was that not as big as how I would have. So this is performing like the actual Claymore video. If you watched the one I did a while back, the uh, Scottish greatsword, early period greatsword sword that went into history is still existing. Uh, so anyway, let's go ahead and uh, cut Come with in. this sword here and uh, see if we can do a good decap. But instead of using it two-handed, because I'm pretty sure it's going to do a beautiful two-handed decap, I'm going to use it one-handed if you were using it, either single sword or in a uh, sword and sh uh, shield mount. Uh, yeah. I would say that was a good uh, decapitation. We lost the entire head here. It went clean through our spine. Uh, do think it might have been even cleaner with a little more uh, leverage behind it, but because uh, we got a little tearing on the back side as it went through, <laughs> if I don't drop it off again. He doesn't trust you not to hurt it more. Yeah, but he's setting up here perfectly again. Uh, other than a little tearing on the back side, but I think that was from the shattering of the spine, because the spines don't always cut cleanly. Uh, they tend to uh, they tend to shatter, and sometimes that causes this kind of effect. It's a beautiful decap, in my opinion. Let me get a close-up of it. Beautiful decap and a fairly clean cut, and we had the bottom of our, our neck stay on the pedestal. Clean cut up till where the sh uh, neck shattered. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed our video today. Uh, be sure and go by Medieval Shop if you want to check out uh, the actual Medieval Scottish sword, and that's, I believe that's what it's listed under. Uh, I think it's an excellent representation of a hand and a half, uh, later century sword, maybe exactly what could be in the actual effigy itself at Edinburgh Castle. Uh, it handles well, Everything stayed very uh, stout throughout the process of all the cutting we've done in this video. Uh, nothing's loose. Everything's secure. It feels very good in the hand. 
Uh, it has a good blade presence. I love the heft to it. I like sort of to have a little bit of weight and know it's not extremely light or you wouldn't be able to do such beautiful cuts as we saw here through the frame of this uh, analog glistening shell head. Anyway, as always, uh, Barbell.